Hello, thank you so much for stopping by. I am super excited about making this video for you today. We'll be going through the books that I've accumulated for our Renaissance unit, and I have about 30 books, but this is by no means an exhaustive list. We will certainly be adding more projects, activities, and books as we go. There is a lot you can cover in this time period, and there are still a few topics that I want to cover that aren't fully included in this video, like Shakespeare and the War of the Roses, but this lot here will take us well into the Renaissance. But first, just a quick minute of how I approach history. We are using the Good and the Beautiful Level 1 History as a guide. We will be doing all the reading and activities in it, and then we will do our own thing for a while. I will do another video later about the hands-on projects and additional books that we use. So moving on, actually, I do have, I don't have a ton on Shakespeare at this point. I just haven't gathered all the resources that I want to use at this time. But this here, Shakespeare for Kids, it has um, a couple of projects, well, actually plenty of projects um, to include it inside. I love this. This um, book is part of a series that is put out by Chicago Review Press. I'm going to be talking about these books in this video. Um, I'm definitely going to be purchasing all of these because these are everything that I have here is from the library so but these ones here we'll be using for a long time they have tons of projects in them and I know that we're gonna have a lot of fun with them and I want to use them for my um, youngest when she gets into this so Chicago Review Press puts out a whole bunch of these things here um, I just love them I was super excited when I flipped through this it's gonna take you through Shakespeare it's a good introduction to Shakespeare I mean we my daughter knows she's been to plays and she knows who Shakespeare is of course but um, this is a, a good place to start and it takes you through his life and there are projects design a coat of arms I thought that would be really fun to do so I think that we will get a lot of use out of this book um, enough to warrant me um, purchasing this particular book right here. Show you a few more pages. All right, and this super cute Shakespeare book is a friend of mine. She studied in Oxford for a bit, and she brought this book back for my daughter, who loves cats. The illustrations are so pretty, and my daughter really loves it. I'll just flip through this a little bit. They're just so cute. And she has already learned some, um, she's learned a little bit from this book as well. So we'll just refer to this for fun. Cats and Shakespeare. I mean, it's the perfect match, right? Look how gorgeous. I just love bringing these um, gorgeous illustrations into our learning. Okay, so Christopher Columbus, I actually have a few books on him. We will go ahead and study some explorers since we are in the Renaissance. Um, so I'll start off with the You Won't, Wouldn't Want To series. They are really fun and engaging, and they have some funny, um, f some funny cartoony illustrations, colorful. There's a timeline, and I really appreciate that. They're just some really fun, um, just fun, some fun illustrations, and I highly recommend this series. They have them on all, it, on this series on all top on all topics, all sorts of topics. Okay, and did Columbus really discover America? This will be an easy one. She will probably read this one herself, or I might le read it aloud to her. All right. Where do you think you're going? She, Christopher Columbus, she'll probably read this one by herself. I find that this one reads like a storybook. Let's flip through these pages here. All right, and who was series? You've probably seen these all over the place. We love them. This is um, who was Christopher Columbus. And there's my youngest daughter helping me out here with the video. We really love this series. We finished one about Walt Disney uh, not too long ago. These are great books. They give you enough information and you definitely learn something. 
I will probably read this one out loud unless she beats me to it. So you, you do have some illustrations. All right, and Columbus, all right, by the Dolaires. I believe they're a husband and wife team. Um, they did these really beautiful books and we have the Greek mythology one and it gets a lot of use. We just love the illustrations in this and we will be drawing from this book as well. Some more artwork. Right, so I'm really excited about these books here. All right, I've got a stack right here. I'm there from Nomad Press, and I will be investing in all of these Nomad Press books. This one here is Explorers of the New World with Projects. This is a homeschool dream. There's so much in here. These books are what I'm most excited about. I will definitely be purchasing these. Um, like I said, all these came from the library. I wanted to flip through them first but I think that these will add a lot of value to our unit. They have some vocabulary words. We'll go through this book together probably and do all the projects in their different, um, different projects to do, make your own compass. Lots of projects to do and I love this. It just brings, it brings the history to life and makes it memorable and we really enjoy this. So this unit could take us right into uh, to the end of the year. We just tend to go until we're done. All right. And then, so the same series, the Renaissance Explorers by Nomad Press here. I love this one. This one has color and it's a very nice looking book. I was so impressed when I opened this book. When I first opened it up and started reading it, it was so intriguing that I th didn't realize that I was reading the introduction. They also have places to go online. I'll show you that. They have places to go online, a uh, little connect area, so you can go and you check um, check out the video or maps or additional information that they give you. So it's really engaging. I highly recommend these already, and we haven't even really started this unit yet. And so they'll go through some explorers. Just nice colorful pictures. All right, and I like them. They have these quotes um, all throughout. And I do love to read the quotations and we discuss them. Um, they're great for discussion and most times these are just people's opinions and it's fun to discuss and decide what we think. Like, do we do agree, do we not, and why, do we care? Um, so I appreciate those quotes that they add in there. There are many projects in here. I've already read um, through a bunch of this book and it's not a dry book, it's very readable. Try some Ethiopian food, how fun is that? So it's a perfect book for homeschoolers in my opinion. I have another one here by Nomad Press, The Silk Road. Cannot wait to get into this, which actually we already have by the time this video goes out. So I know the Silk Road spans like a thousand years or something like that, but it's definitely played a part in the Renaissance, so we will go ahead and get into it. This one doesn't have color. There are many activities in here, again with some vocabulary words. Show some projects. So I don't know much about the Silk Road. I don't, I don't remember. Now we made that project right there. I'll post some pictures of those on Instagram. Um, I don't really know if I learned about it, so the Silk Road in school, or maybe I did, and I just don't remember because history in school for me was like really boring. Make some tea out of some spices there. Oh, I just cannot wait. I love this kind of thing. So anyway, history was boring for me until like 12th grade, and I'm so sad to say that because history is so exciting to me and all of us here. So I'm just fascinated by this, and I cannot wait to learn about this. So I just want to tell you something um, about the Silk Road if you are planning to study this. Hannah from Pepper and Pine, she is awesome and has a wonderful channel filled with 
unit study resources. She's going to do one on the Silk Road. So I cannot wait for her video to come out because I'm going to use all her ideas and her recommendations. She includes projects and a lot of hands-on stuff and just awesome quality videos. She's just fantastic and has inspired me greatly. All right, and then I have this Chicago Review Press book, another series that I love. And I will be buying all of the materials that I can find, like I already mentioned. This one is Galileo for Kids. It covers Galileo and other influencers of that time. It has a ton of projects. Cannot wait to do this. Okay, make, it's making a um, Renaissance meal. That's gonna be fun. Whenever you can involve cooking in your unit, that is just super fun for the whole family. The whole family gets to enjoy that. So lots of projects. I'm just flipping through here to show you a little bit. Sorry about the glare. I, I This is my first time doing this kind of point of view with books and it, the glare is terrible. So I will try to try not to do that next time. <laughs> I'll figure something out. So it goes right to um, through his, to his last days. And I'm just trying to find this one project that I really wanted to talk about. And it was um, a care package, making Gal a care package for Galileo. I think that would be fun too. All right, so, okay, Artists of the Renaissance, nope, not that one. Ah, here we go, Artists of the Renaissance. Here is another Chicago Review Press one, Michelangelo for Kids. Another one I'll be purchasing. I'm so excited about these. This is what brings history to life, you know? So you have some Italian pronunciation. That will be super fun. They have lots of projects. Create a monster. Make your own paints. All that fun stuff that you always wanted to do and now here's my opportunity to do it. I just love this. Right, moving on. Here's another one from Nomad Press, another favorite. The Renaissance Artist. Takes you through artists of that time. It has color. There are timelines. Um, lots of projects, definitely looking forward to this. Um, you know, in the Renaissance art, you have to keep in mind that there were, are, you know, that not everybody was modest or, or covered up. So um, <laughs> just keep that in mind, obviously. All right. So another one is the Renaissance art book. This one looks good. We'll probably get into, get through the whole thing. It's nicely laid out. I don't think it would be boring. Sorry if you can hear some stomping around upstairs. I've got um, three girls upstairs having lots of fun. So this book here actually, I believe it comes with a card game. or is a card game that you can order with it. And I did order that for Christmas for my daughter. It's like, um, I'll show you right here. It's, um, I put that in her stocking. It's like a go fish style uh, Renaissance art. Uh, card game. And that card game actually comes with a little mini book. So that's, you know, adding games is another thing that makes um, the learning much more fun. All right, and Pippo the Fool. I love this one. This is a living book that was gifted to us a long time ago. Um, you probably recognize that dome right there. Pippo was the designer. And this is his story. I love the style of uh, illustrations, the Renaissance style that they have going on. And I would love to collect more books like this. So beautiful. Love that one. 
All right, and then the Art of the Renaissance. This one's huge. So this one just covers um, different important cities of the Renaissance and their artists. We will not read every single word of this, but we will use it to introduce the lesser known names of the cities in Italy and the artists you may not be too familiar with. I always learn so much from this, doing these unit studies with my daughter. All right, I have a book for myself. It's called Painted Prayers, the Book of Hours in Medieval and Renaissance Art. So I had no idea even what the Book of Hours was. I just ordered it from the library and flipped through it, and I've been reading it. Um, I will not be reading this one to my daughter, but I will be sharing little bits here and there that I think she'll like. The Book of Hours, in case you don't know, is basically a prayer book that they carried around with them, almost like a devotional. They would pray these prayers throughout the day, and the wealthier people, people would commission artists to com customize their books to include pictures of themselves and biblical illustrations. So fancy that. You could insert yourself into the scene of the birth of Jesus if you had the money. Anyway, I quite find it quite fascinating. So that one is for me, and I do enjoy doing my own research and reading along with the topic if I'm interested. Let me know if you do that. Let me know in the comments if you find yourself doing a little side research of your own. I did that with um, Van Gogh when we were doing a little um, a, a little botany study. Okay, now here is an eyewitness book. These are great. Usually you will find some good pictures with a little blurb beside them, so they are great to look through. My daughter will probably look through this one on her own, and I will look through it as well. And we'll probably find something interesting mentioned here that we will want to look into further. I love when that happens. All right, the Renaissance. We will be reading this whole thing. It's just general information about the Renaissance, and it's nicely laid out, and it's very readable. So, got this one from the library. I've already had to renew my books a couple times. The Italian, oh sorry, the Renaissance Places. This is a book about what was going on where during that time. You probably won't be reading this one word for word, but I think it will be good if you want to go a little more in depth. All right, the Italian Renaissance, living history. Oh, I like this one. These are photographs, photographs, their reenactments. I really like this one. I love that idea of them doing photos of the reenactments. There are some photos of works of art as well. I think this is really going to be a valuable resource for us. It's just beautiful. Okay, Art and Civilization in the Renaissance. This is another general book of information. We're getting close to the end of this video just to give you some um, hope. So we may or may not read this word for word. We'll see. We'll probably just flip through it. All right. So we got a lot of books on Gutenberg. We had already read a good one recently to introduce us, and this is the one right here that we read. We knew who he was, but we didn't really know his story. So this one here is um, it's all in black and white, and it gave us a great introduction to Gutenberg and his story. It's so inspiring to um, to read about these these people who um, you know the, these inventors who broke through the barriers and, and made such a huge impact. All right, breaking into print. This is storybook form with the um, Renaissance style illustrations, which I really appreciate. It just adds so much to it. Love it. Johann Gutenberg and the Amazing Printing Press. So this is storybook style again. 
She'll read this one to herself probably. It's a good living book. Talks about where books first started. It's a great one. All right, one of my favorites is the Geronimo Stilton. Geronimo Stilton is a series about a mouse who has had all these adventures. And my daughter has a couple of them. And so when I saw this, I knew she would really enjoy it. Also, it is in graphic novel format, which she loves anyway. I might even read this one. Who knows? It looks really fun. It's a nice little addition, a little change. I like that. Okay, Gutenberg's Bible. I like this one. It's uh, very readable. It's bright and short. There you go. A Johann Gutenberg. This one I will flip through myself. There's a lot of text and not a lot of pictures, but I'm sure there is a lot of good information in this book, so I'm not going to judge the book yet until I've read it. Sometimes it's easy to assume that it would be dry just by looking at it. And I have two more books here to show you. Okay, so Leonardo da Vinci. Here is a Magic Treehouse one. Magic Treehouse is a huge series. I love it because a lot of the books go along with what we are studying and it's really fun to read. They have some illustrations. So there's that and here's another one that I will be purchasing. This is by Nomad Press, my favorite. And this is Amazing Leonardo da Vinci Inventions. So valuable. Not a lot of color in this one. Talking about his different inventions. And there are some projects. I'm looking forward to learning about some of his other works besides the more popular ones like Mona Lisa and his flying machine. And I'll also be reviewing these books to let you know how we did like them and also let you know what other books we added and the projects that we ended up doing. I'll probably, I don't know if I'm putting them in a video or just doing it on Instagram or whatnot. And that is it. This unit could take us to the end of the school year easily and we may just do that. We do that with history. We just go until we feel done. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any comment recommendations for us in the comments. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.